Coming up on today's episode of Airborne, United Launch Alliance and Blue Origin unite to develop a new American rocket engine. Four Flight version 6.3.2 is ready for iOS 8, and airmen missing from World War II are accounted for. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. The U.S. spaceflight industry is moving in a positive direction, as with the announcement that the United Launch Alliance, referred to as ULA, and Blue Origin LLC, a privately funded aerospace company owned by Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, have entered into an agreement to jointly fund development of the new BE-4 rocket engine by Blue Origin. The ULA Blue Origin Agreement allows for a four-year development process with full-scale testing in 2016 and the first flight in 2019. The BE-4 will be available for use by ULA and Blue Origin for both companies' next-generation launch systems. The BE-4 is a liquid oxygen, liquefied natural gas rocket engine that delivers 550,000 foot-pounds of thrust, and two BE-4s will power each ULA booster. ULA is investing in the engineering and development of the BE-4 to enable availability for national security, civil, human, and commercial missions. For Flight Mobile version 6.3.2 is now available on the App Store. And the company says the update brings performance improvements, a few bug fixes, and most importantly, support for iOS 8, iPhone 6, and iPhone 6 Plus. It also provides improvements for Stratus customers. However, ForeFlight continues to recommend waiting for the first Apple iOS 8 maintenance update. They say iOS 8 is a remarkably stable platform, but all new operating systems have undiscovered bugs that need fixing, and may cause unexpected device or app issues. ForeFlight says that those who update before the iOS maintenance update should be prepared for a light to moderate chop from apps not yet optimized for iOS 8 or from unexpected operating system bugs. ForeFlight is also encouraging pilots to disable Apple's automatic app update feature to prevent a change in operation before you have a chance to review and ground test the changes prior to flight. After these messages, U.S. servicemen missing in action from World War II are accounted for. Stay tuned. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, send Jim an email to jim at aero-news.net. The Department of Defense POW Missing Personnel Office announced that the remains of U.S. servicemen missing in action from World War II have been accounted for and are being returned to their families for burial with full military honors. On April 10, 1944, Army Air Force's 1st Lieutenant William D. Bernier, along with 11 other B-24D Liberator crew members, took off from Texter Strip, NASDAQ Airfield, New Guinea, on a mission to attack an anti-aircraft site at Hansa Bay. The aircraft was shot down by enemy anti-aircraft, and four of the crewmen were able to parachute from the aircraft, but were reported to have died in captivity. Following World War II, the Army Graves Registration Service conducted investigations and recovered the remains of three of the missing airmen. In 1949, AGRS concluded the remaining nine crew members were unrecoverable. However, in 2001, a U.S.-led team located wreckage of a B-24D that bore the tail number of the aircraft. After several surveys, the Joint POW-MIA Accounting Command excavated the site and recovered additional human remains and other evidence. Each week we share with you a sample of an online video one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Yeah, 
Could you pull? Final lift off of this plan. Cut, 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 cut. Drop your nose, drop your nose. Stay with it, stay with it, stay with it, stay with it. Stay with it, you're good. Beautiful. When you have to make an emergency landing on an aircraft carrier, it takes skill and a cool head. You'll see in here both in this video of a barrier arrested landing on the USS Ranger. Search Rand McNally Atlas Crash on YouTube. According to the new market research report, the global business jet market was valued at $20.9 billion in 2013, and it's expected to reach $33.8 billion by the end of 2020, which is a compound annual growth rate of 6.86%. The report addresses the business jet market by aircraft type of jet and geography, and provides an analysis of the business jet market for the next five years. It provides an overview of the drivers, challenges, and restraints that impact the industry. It also provides details of their financial positions, key products, their unique selling points, and key developments. The research report segments the market on the basis of aircraft type, region, country, forecasting revenues, market share, and analyzing trends in each of the subsectors. This report is broad in scope and will prove to be valuable to the business jet industry. After the break, MQ-4C Triton UAS arrives at Naval Air Station Patuxent River. You're watching Airborne. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. The first U.S. Navy MQ-4C Triton unmanned aircraft system has completed a flight from California to Maryland. The UAS flew 11 hours from the north of Grumman facility in Palmdale, California, to Naval Air Station Patuxent River to start its next phase of testing, moving the program closer towards operational assessment. During the flight, the joint team controlled the aircraft from a ground station in Palmdale, which served as the forward operating base, and a Navy system integration lab at Patuxent River, which served as the main operating base. Over the next few weeks, two other Tritons, one of which is a demonstration aircraft owned by Northrop Grumman, will also fly to Patuxent River. Triton is specifically designed for maritime missions of up to 24 hours. It can fly at altitudes higher than 10 miles, allowing for coverage of 1 million square nautical miles of ocean in a single mission. Garmin has introduced a new extended warranty program for aircraft equipped with Garmin G1000 systems that are both in and out of warranty coverage. The G1000 flight level service contract, which may be purchased at any time and provides warranty coverage for G1000 systems, lasts for three years and it begins immediately after the aircraft is registered under the service contract. The flight level service contract is available for customers purchasing new and used G1000 equipped airplanes. All G1000 line replaceable units are covered under the new service contract, including labor associated with a claim. The flight level program is fully transferable at the time of sale of a participating aircraft. Customers will receive priority shipping for all line replaceable units and can utilize Garmin's network of authorized service centers. Pricing varies depending on the aircraft and the number of units installed. In the not-too-distant future, some parts and tools intended to be used in space will be fabricated in space rather than produced on the ground and shipped to orbit. This machine shop for space will mark the first time that a multi-purpose manufacturing device will be utilized off-world, 
to create parts, tools, and emergency solutions. Developed by Maiden Space Incorporated, the 3D printer is part of a technology demonstration intended to show that on-site, on-demand manufacturing is a viable alternative to launching items from Earth. This first printer will be using ABS plastic, while the second generation unit, which is scheduled for delivery to the ISS in 2015, will offer multiple material capacity and an increased build volume. The second printer provided by Made in Space will be available for use by businesses, researchers, and anyone who wants to create in-space hardware rapidly, affordably, and safely. The ability to produce items in space has far-reaching implications when applied to the technology needed for prolonged space missions. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. You can join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition. And be advised, some huge upgrades and changes are coming soon for Airborne. Starting with a daily schedule, that's Monday through Friday, early next year, and much, much more. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.